hear the noise from where we lived, but nothing prepared you for the size of the place. They put me to work on 401. That's what we called her. We knew she'd be the largest passenger ship in the world, but we didn't call her Titanic then. I was there from the beginning. I watched the ship race lay the keel blocks. They set big wooden blocks on the slipway to start with. Then the keel at top of it, like a backbone. And the frames attached to that, like a skeleton. Workshops everywhere. It took weeks to find your way around. There were workshops for every trade you ever heard of. Painters, sailmakers, coppersmiths, boiler makers, cabinet makers. I even learned a bit about French policy of them. Harlem Roof was a fine place to work, but dangerous. Every ship cost a life, and there'd be lots of injuries besides. I was in the engine works for a while. Very well equipped it was. That's where we built the triple expansion engines. Two of them, each as high as a three-story house. I worked in the frame bending shop. You had heat steel beams in the furnace, then hook them on the slabs with cast iron, and hammer them curved. It was skilled work. You had to bend them more than you needed because the frame straightened out a little when it cooled. The shell plates that made up the hull weighed up to four and a half tons. <laughs> they were taller than the da. The plates were overlapped on the edges. Some were raised one after another. We called it clincher. One of the four men taught me years ago. That's how you built steel ships. I worked as a heater boy. You had to heat the rivets on a wee plate. You pumped the bellows till the rivet was white hot. Then you get a hold of it with your tongs and throw it up to the catcher. And he put it in the hole in the plate for the holder up. There were two of us on the other side of the plate for the holder up. I had to hammer the rivet so it filled the hole before it turned dull red. The double bottom. That's a wee space we called the tanks, made up of steel plates. The rest of the rivet squad all had to fit into that gap. One of the four men would check each other with a special hammer. It made a ringing sound. We'd have to get back. He'd chase it out after work. I'd get scared walking down in that double bottom. You only had candles for light. And the constant hammering against the shell plates. You could hear it all over Belfast. Some of those boys ended up stone deaf, so they did. We were paid 31 bob a week. The heater boy and catcher got 16 bob. But we all worked the same 54 hours. The upper deck was steel too, and part of the strength of the ship. There's no straight lines on the ship. And when you look down the weather deck, you can see the shear of the hull, the stopped her flexing at sea. The stern frame had to be strong enough to take the rudder of turning in heavy seas. You'd have all these timbers and guy wires to steady the frame, and men scurrying around like ants underneath. When we came to launch day, I was torn between pride and fear. The standing wings were coated in tallow, train oil and soft soap. So the ship would slide when they shifted her weight off the blocks. That was the most dangerous part. When the shipwrights were knocking away the last props, they were under compression, you see, and the sliding waves would be released by the hydraulic trigger. One hundred thousand people watched the launch. Some paid a bob to sit in the reserved seating. There were extra trams laid on. Then we all... And Titanic was the parade of Belfast. Thank you for joining us. The tour will end in a few